Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to a brand new mod spotlight on Open Blocks. Open Blocks is best described probably as a crazy mishmash of different items and tools and gadgets and toys. Um, it adds just so many different random things to the game. Um, it's an open um, open source mod, so you can like view the source code and everything. Um, Mikey Moo is the um, main developer on it, but it's really a team of people, um, and uh, they've also you know taken requests and suggestions from the community, and different people have submitted uh, pull requests and stuff like that to add code to the to the mod of course he has to approve them so it's not like they just get automatically added or anything but it's definitely a cool mod just adds a lot of different stuff so i'm going to go through the mod and just show you all the different cool toys added by open blocks and give you as good an explanation as i can of how they all work let's get started checking it out all right i think the very first item added to the game was this nifty gadget right here. It's called the Jaded Ladder. And I'm going to show you what it does. Let's take a look. Uh, first off, have you ever tried to, uh, you know, climb up an area and you get up to the top and there's a trap door and when you get to the trap door you have to jump out? Yeah, that's a big hassle, right? Well, the Jaded Ladder is really cool. Um, it's a trap door that also acts as a ladder. So you can climb up the trap door slash ladder combination pretty neat right so without that right you know if we had just a uh, trap door as it were you'd uh, have to do something like this climb up to the top and then when you get to the top you have to kind of it's annoying it's hard to get out sometimes you can jump sometimes you can't it's just it's just a hassle right so the jaded ladder i think is one of the first mods added by open blocks and it's just very cool and useful I'm not going to claim that Mikey had me in mind when he made this, but he probably was thinking of people who aren't so good at um, building things, so he added the building guide. Boom. Ta-da! I'm going to go ahead and make it dark out here for just a moment because it's probably a little bit easier to see this at night. Cool. So the building guide here um, is pretty neat. First off, you can switch what type of mode it is um, by shift clicking on the block. So this is cylinder mode, and you can see it's going to build a cylinder. Um, and this is cuboid mode, and it's going to build a cuboid or a cube. Um, you can also put it in dome mode, uh, triangle mode, which is pretty neat, uh, pentagon mode, very cool, and uh, hexagon mode. So there's plenty of different modes you can go through. And what it's basically doing is putting um, phantom blocks in the world, which you can then build upon just easily enough. And it'll allow you to build whatever you want. So if you want to build a sphere, um, or if you want to build a cylinder, or a cuboid, or a dome. Now if you want, you can also, let's put it in cuboid mode because that's easiest to understand. You can also adjust um, the, the size of it by just right clicking on the appropriate block face. So if we sit here and change it, you can see it's making it um, slightly longer on the that direction. Now if we click on the opposite side of that face, it'll make it shorter in that direction. So you can see here, just like that. So, uh, you know, one face will make it shorter, the opposite face will make it longer in just that one direction. Okay, so if I wanted to build a 9x9, nine nine, for example, it would just be as easy as that. Cool, right? There we go. 9x8x9. Nine by by nine. Perfect. Now, of course, that is uh, radius from the center block. So if we're actually going to make a 9x9, nine nine, we're probably going to want to go down to 4. Okay. There we go. That's a proper 9x9 nine nine house, right? Because it's four blocks from the center. Um, now, of course, to get the uh, you know Y changing, you just click on the top of the block, um, and you have to click on the bottom of the block to get it to shrink down smaller. Cool. So that is the building guide. Now this block also has a creative mode only function. You have to be in creative mode for this to work. So basically what it's going to do is without creative mode it's a guide for you to build with and you can go ahead and build it around. But if you're in creative mode simply place a block of obsidian on top of the block like so and then right click the builder's guide with whatever kind of block you want to build out of and boom it's going to automatically build for you but again that's only if you're in creative mode that does not work in survival mode so keep that in mind what a lovely nine by nine Let's move on. All right, so the next block to show you in open blocks is this guy, the elevator, perhaps one of my favorites. All right, the elevator is basically exactly how it sounds. You place an elevator in the world, like so, and then you place another one on top of it, like so. And then simply, when standing on the bottom elevator, jump. Ta-da, you're teleported up 
onto the elevator above it. Hold shift and you'll teleport down. So shift to go down, jump to go up. It's an awesome block and it's definitely one of my favorites. You should also note that you can dye these uh, any color you want. The only thing is only um, elevators of matching colors will be able to teleport between them. So I just dyed this cyan. It's not going to be able to teleport until I dye the bottom one cyan as well. And now it works. Cool. And just note that the range on uh, the elevators is about 20 blocks by default, but that's something you can change in the config. Um, the next block is the healer. This does not have uh, a crafting recipe. It's another creative mode only item, but it'll heal any player who walks up to it. So pretty straightforward, probably don't even need to show it to you guys. So we'll skip that one. Uh, but basically creative mode only, that's what it does. Next up, let's take a look at the light box. The light box is actually really cool. I'm gonna get myself um, some empty maps here and I'm gonna start mapping out the terrain nearby. Hello there, map, how are you? Ah, yes, you're doing pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and place the light box on a wall, boom. I'm gonna place the empty map in it, like so. Whoa, look how awesome that looks. All right, let's go somewhere. Uh, let's go, I don't know. Let's head north, and I'm going to go ahead and map out the next area. Probably didn't go far enough, but you'll be able to see the point here. Yeah, it didn't go far enough. But basically, uh, once you've gone ahead and mapped out a couple different areas nearby, you can go ahead and insert those maps into the light boxes, and they'll happily show up and build a really big map of the area nearby. It's really cool looking. Um, you can also place these light boxes on the floor if you want um, and do the same thing. So you can go ahead and just uh, stick them on the floor, and boom, you can see a map of the terrain nearby. So it's really just a way to view the map, but it looks really good and flush with uh, the block size so you can build multiple maps and it'll kind of all come together. Nice. Next up, the target. Target is great for target practice. All you need to do is apply a redstone signal to the target, uh, run some redstone off to the side, and then place a glowstone lamp or whatever you want. And basically what the target does is it emits a redstone signal of strength relative to how good of an aim you have. So let's activate the target apply a redstone signal. Now if I shoot this guy off on the side like this, boom, it's hardly going to um, emit much of a signal. You can see that uh, the signal was pretty weak, okay? Even there it only uh, emit enough of a signal for the uh, block to barely light up. But if we hit it in the center, boom, it's going to have a much stronger redstone signal. I think the center is like 16 and the far edge is like 1. So it's great for target practice and little mini games if you want to set something up like that. There we go. Pretty cool, right? And then, of course, uh, turn it off and you'll get your arrows back. Cool. So that's the target. Just a fun little way to set up maybe target practice or some kind of creative game that you'd want to have so that basically the better the shot you have, uh, the stronger the redstone signal. Not bad at all. Next up is the grave. But I really can't show you how the grave works unless I die. Oh no! Oh, what's this at my latest death point? It's my grave. So just simply uh, break the grave block. Now there does have to be a um, solid block under you. So if you land in lava, there's no solid block for the grave to land on. You will not um, drop all your items um, into a grave. You will instead drop them um, into the lava. So as long as there's a solid block under you, your grave stores your items and they don't get destroyed. Next up is the flag. The flag is just uh, cosmetic. You can shift right click to change colors, whatever color you want, and then just right click to place it either on the wall um, or uh, place it on the ground. Uh, it's really just a nice little cosmetic thing, but it's also useful if you're like in a cave mining or something and you want to be able to find your way out, something like that, um, or just like path marking. So just a nifty little gadget, just like most of the open blocks blocks. Uh, next up, we've got a tank. The tank stores liquids, just like you might expect. So let's get ourselves some water cans. Cool. There it goes. Storing all those liquids. You can see it stores about 16 buckets of liquids. Um, we can also go ahead and break it, and it'll remain um, full once you break the tank, and you can place it back down. Now, the other thing is you can go ahead and whoosh. That was cool looking. Haha. -ha, it's a multi-block as well. So you can go ahead and, uh, you know, make as many as you want. 
it does some really nice connected textures and acts as a multi-block and you know evenly balances out the liquid uh, now the only other thing that you might want to know is that you can't drain out of these tanks um, unless you um, click on the right block so if you try and drain from the top you're not going to be able to but from the bottom you can because that's where the water is so you have to click on a tank that actually has water in it when you're dealing with this multi-block structure but look how cool it looks as you're draining water out pretty awesome right next up the bear trap pretty nifty gadget simply place it on the ground uh, right click on it and hold right click with your hand until it's fully opened and then if an animal happens to walk into it oh boy they get caught they are definitely trapped and they'll be stuck there for a while until you come by and dispense with them. Ah, bear trap, pretty cool. Next up is one of my favorite blocks from Open Blocks. First off, you're going to need to have a tank full of water underneath. And it will use the water, so keep that in mind. You'll probably want to refill it. This here is the sprinkler. The sprinkler you just place down on top of a water block like that, and it'll start watering the land for you. Uh, sprinklers increase the speed at which uh, seeds grow and they'll also serve as a water source block um, so you don't have to worry about keeping a water source block around. You can see it's going to uh, keep this um, land fertile and wet so you don't have to worry about you know having an actual water source block. It simulates a water source block just because it exists. Um, not only will it increase the speed at which seeds grow, you can also throw some bone meal in there and it'll increase the speed at which seeds grow even more. Uh, so it's a very neat looking way of uh, uh, having a nice little farm going. The sprinkler is pretty cool. But like I said, keep in mind, it will start to drain water out of the tanks. So do yourself a favor and set up an automated uh, refill method for that water. Next up, the item cannon. Yet another fun and interesting item. Uh, first off, get yourself an item cannon and then also get yourself a cursor. Right click on the cannon where you want to uh, aim and then click on the block you want to aim at. Boom. And it'll go ahead and adjust the aim of that to the block that you click on. Neat. Pretty cool, right? Um, so you can go ahead and aim wherever you want. Awesome. And then just place some items inside. Um, I think in order to do that, you're going to need a chest adjacent to it. And some items in the chest. And it'll go ahead and uh, shoot one stack at a time. So if I put, you know, a few items in here, like so, looks good, right? Let's go ahead and give it a redstone signal. Ta-da! It shot that stack of items cool and the items as you can see are landing right about where it's aimed at pretty nifty right now that's actually going to really be useful with a block you're about to see in a few moments here what item is that yet another favorite it's called the vacuum hopper uh, now this guy is definitely going to need a hopper and some ender pearls and some obsidian to get going but boom look at that it's going to go ahead and act like a hopper but it's a vacuum hopper in that it catches items that land nearby and sucks them in ha how cool is that Gotta love it. Um, so they get sucked in there, and you can also see that you can uh, set your item outputs, okay? So we can kind of uh, figure out how to output this item by clicking on different sides of the block. So if you want, you can output to that direction or that direction, um, but you can also right click to rotate the block and choose the bottom, and that's where the output will occur. And now all the items get dropped into the chest below. So we can go ahead and drop items nearby, and they'll get sucked into the vacuum hopper. It has a range of, uh, let's say, four blocks. Okay, maybe three. Cool. Three to four blocks, let's say. Um, and it sucks all the items in, pulls them in, and drops them right down here. Nice, right? Now, the other nifty thing this can do, let's go ahead and put a tank on the side of that. And we're going to open up the XP output side. And let's see, which side is this? Uh, that's not the side I want. That's the side I want. Once you've specified an experience output side, it will absorb um, experience. Cool. And it'll be able to collect all that experience in its internal little buffer here and then store it inside a tank. So you can store experience in liquid form uh, using open blocks. And there's a couple other ways we can manage this as well. And that method would be the XP drain. Simply stand on top of an XP drain and it will drain experience from the player and store it in the tank below. Cool. There's a couple things that can use experience and we'll uh, check them out in just a few minutes. Now, before we get into all that, how about I show you guys the sponge? You can see a couple examples here. It's pretty straightforward. Simply place it in the world, and it soaks up any nearby water. Ha! How cool is that? Uh, so it does a nice job of uh, clearing water nearby. And the other button I want to show you is the big button. This guy's awesome. Uh, simply place it in the world and right-click, 
and it acts just like a button. However, you can shift right click and place some items in there. The more items you place in, the more tick delay it'll have. So if you put 20 items in, it'll have a 20 tick delay and it'll last a full second. If you put um, 40 items in there, uh, you'll see a full two second tick delay. Pretty cool. That's the big button and the sponge. Next up is another great example of one of those neat and interesting blocks. I'm gonna show you the magic pencil. Simply right click in the world. Hey, nothing's happening. What's going on here? What is this? Oh, hey, I can't walk any further. That's because it places down invisible blocks that you can only see if you're wearing pencil glasses. Ah, there they are. Okay, cool. So as I draw these in the world, they'll slowly fill in. Now they are physical blocks. You can interact with them whether or not you're wearing the glasses. So as I take the glasses off, I'm walking on top of them. You can use them to build bridges or you can use them to build all kinds of interesting and sneaky stuff. How cool is that, huh? All right, so now let's take a look at um, the other feature of these things. Now if you shift right click this guy, um, you'll see that you can place a half height panel. Boom, look at that. Neat. Um, or you can put stairs or panels or whatever you want. So I just created stairs. Ha <laughs> um, ha, that is awesome. You can put an inverted block. Now this guy is actually pretty interesting. The inverted block you can't see while you're wearing the glasses, but if you take the glasses off, you can see it. Aha, uh -huh. pretty cool, right? Um, and then you can do the same thing, inverted panel, uh, which you know you don't have to be wearing the glasses to see the panel. Okay, so uh, inverted half height panel, stairs, etc. So pretty nifty. And then back to normal block, which you can't see unless you're wearing the glasses. Put them on, and then it shows up. And the ones that are inverted disappear. That's crazy. Now next up are crayons, and you'll note that there's 16 different crayons, one for each of the uh, Minecraft 16 color system. Um, when you place them in the world, okay, uh, you do not interact with them if you can't see them. So as I just place them, I'm walking through them, and you have to wear the matching glasses in order to see them. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my black crayon glasses, and I'll see the black crayon blocks, and I can now interact with them cool okay um, now if uh, you shift right click placement mode panel it does the same thing so you can place panels uh, etc etc you can place placed uh, stairs and then the inverted block is the same deal um, you can't see it while wearing the glasses and you won't interact with it uh, but if you take the glasses off there you go now you're interacting with it again so the basic difference here between pencils and um, the markers is that markers um, will not interact um, if uh, you can't see them. Where the pencil blocks you will interact with and you will be able to stand on them or they'll block your path even if you can't see them. Uh, where the markers, if you can't see them, uh, they don't get in your way. So that's kind of the gist there. So you can walk through it when you can't see them. Cool. And like I said, uh, they each have their own color setting here. So if I use uh, some red um, crayons in the world, I'm sorry, crayons, not markers, you have to put on uh, the red glasses in order to see them. And now, of course, if you want, you can find in a chest some amazing Technicolor glasses, which look cool and allow you to see everything. Nice. So remember, I promised you guys to show you the different uses of liquid experience. Now we're on to it. All right. First off, the XP bottler. Let's take a look. Uh, you can auto extract, auto eject, and auto drink. Let's do this. We're going to auto drink from the left side. Ta-da, it filled up some experience. Cool. So once we've enabled auto drink mode, we can fill up with experience. And I'm just gonna get myself uh, some empty bottles. Cool, glass bottles and stick them right in there. Oh, nice, it's making some bottles of enchanting for me. Perfect, that's what I wanted to see. Uh, now that we're getting those bottles of enchanting, we'll probably want to uh, eject into a nearby chest to store it. So we'll just go ahead and open up uh, the auto eject tab. We're going to check the box and we're gonna click on the side that we want to auto eject into. Beautiful. All right, no more liquid experience it looks like, or at least we're almost out of it. Yeah, definitely out of it. What else can we do with liquid experience? Well, I'm glad you asked. Two very simple things, we've got the auto anvil, which again has pretty similar stuff. Uh, you can auto extract items, uh, you can auto extract uh, experience, auto eject items, and then um, auto drink. 
So let's take a look here. I think we want to put auto drink on this side, maybe? There we go. And it starts draining the experience and we'll drink it up. It can store a good amount of experience, so don't be surprised if it drains your tank dry. Uh, but simply um, place an item in the left slot and you'll be able to, um, you know, have it auto repaired like an anvil would. Um, so you're also going to want to um, auto extract from different sides. So I'm going to tell it to extract um, the required components from the right side. And all I have to do is supply it with a damaged tool. So let's get ourselves um, a pick. For example, an iron pickaxe. And we'll get a little bit of um, iron ingots as well. There we go. Once you place the um, damaged iron pick in the chest that it's auto extracting from, it's going to go ahead and pull it straight into the inventory. And the same for the item that's going to repair it. Um, or maybe not. There we go. And then it repairs the pick. Now, it might not have automatically pulled it because the pick um, couldn't be repaired fully with that item yet. So keep that in mind. And just like the auto anvil, we have the auto enchantment table. Now this guy, you're also going to need to have uh, bookshelves nearby. So just like vanilla enchanting, you must have uh, bookshelves nearby. But you can slider to set your uh, level that you want to enchant with. So let's just enchant with level 4, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, and you can also do the same deal, where you can auto extract from a side. So let's say that side, okay? And it'll automatically extract the item. We can also auto eject to a side, like that, and it'll auto eject. Let's go ahead and put the iron pickaxe in. See, it got pulled out. Um, we can also uh, auto drink experience from this side. Cool. There it goes. It made the unbreaking one pick. Nice. Uh, the next couple blocks I'm not going to show you because they're pretty straightforward. The block breaker and the block placer. The block breaker, when it receives a redstone signal, will um, break the block in front of it, and the placer will place the block in front of it. Now let's take a look at another one of my favorites, the rope ladder. This guy is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and place a block here and put the rope ladder on it. Ta-da! The rope ladder, not needing blocks to be attached to, uh, will go ahead and drop a rope all the way straight down to the ground and you can climb up the rope ladder and get to the top. How awesome is that? The donation station is a nice little item. If you love an item and you want to figure out where it came from, simply place it in the donation station and it'll report who made it. Open blocks, Mikey, Nevercast, Bach, and Linquid. Okay? If you want to donate to the mod author of the um, item that you place in here, click on that button and it's going to go ahead and open up uh, the link to their website. Cool. You can go ahead and jump over to their website and take a look for if they offer any donations or whatever you want. So uh, it's a really nice way to, number one, see uh, what, um, you know, what, what mod uh, the item comes from, and at the same time, figure out a neat way to donate. Now, of course, if they don't have a donation link available, you won't be able to click on that button. Oh yeah, it definitely detects vanilla items too. The next item I want to show you is a combination of a couple items. It's the height map projector. Uh, if you've seen my Forgecraft series, you might have seen this recently. First off, get a cartographer. This little robot is pretty neat, and he's going to follow you around. Uh, once you've gone ahead and gotten your cartographer, which isn't too hard to make, uh, go ahead and give him a empty map. Now you can make maps in a scale of 1 to 1, 1 to 2, 1 to 4, or 1 to 8. The larger the map, the longer it'll take for this cartographer to map out the surrounding area. Simply shift right click to give him the map and you'll see that there's a little map that shows up in front of him and once the uh, screen is completely green it means he's finished mapping. Now I just gave him a 1 to 1 map so it's not going to be uh, too um, you know, large but it's also pretty quick to make. If you gave him a 1 to 8 map it would take a few minutes to fill out. Once you've got that map you can go ahead and place it in the height map projector. Simply place it in the center here and it'll show you a height map of the surrounding area. How neat is this? Cool. So you can kind of see um, a height map of all the stuff nearby. You can kind of see my, uh, my my little house there with the uh, elevator on top. You can even see um, and the um, snowy forest to the right of me and uh, even a little bit of water off to the left. Pretty cool. So the height map projector is just a nifty little gadget like most of Open Blocks' toys. Next up is one of my favorite blocks, and it's really pretty nifty. Let's take a look at it. Uh, what we've got here is the following, the paint mixer. The paint mixer allows you to create your own custom paint of almost any color. Simply uh, place in some cyan dye, uh, some magenta, uh, some yellow, which you're going to want to get um, dandelion yellow for, and some ink sacs for the black dye goes in right there. And you'll see that they uh, go ahead and use up some of the colors, just like so, and you're able to mix your own colors of paint. You can specify any color you want. Just click and drag around. You can see it gives them some numeric values. You can pick any color 
in the rainbow, basically. And you can also slide down the slider to make them a little bit lighter. So if you want to get into more pastel type colors, um, even down into some really light colors like this, and eventually all the way down to just, uh, you know, the, the black and white and gray stuff. So pretty nifty. So let's go ahead and mix a couple colors, shall we? I'm going to get this random greenish, slightly bluish color. Uh, now, of course, you're going to need some milk because, as we know, all paint comes from milk. All right, maybe not really, but hey, it works. Go ahead and uh, place your milk can or uh, milk bucket in the top left slot and click the mix button as I just did. And it's going to go ahead and mix the paint. Cool, right? Uh, once the paint has been fully mixed, you can get the paint can, pull it out. Now, uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm also gonna get, get kind of like this uh, reddish orangish color over here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll let that mix. While that's happening, I'm going to place down uh, my paint can. Now to go along with this, you're going to want some canvas, which is just a fence with some paper around it, and you'll get nine canvas for this, and you can kind of place them in the world. Let's go ahead and get our other paint color. Simply right click on your paint can with your paintbrush, and it'll change the color to that color, and you can go ahead and paint your blocks. Very nice. Now different sides of different blocks can have different colors. Pretty cool, right? Um, now it's not only canvas that you can paint, you can also paint some vanilla blocks. So for example, if I place stone bricks in the world, I can paint them as well. You can even paint glass. Cool. Not bad, right? Now, uh, like I said, you can uh, mix all kinds of different colors, but the fun doesn't end there. Once you've got all the different colors that are really cool, you're probably gonna wanna make a drawing table. And in here, get yourself some unprepared stencils. Place them in the drawing table, and you can go ahead and uh, draw different stencils on here. So just click through and you can see all the different stencils that are available. Let's go ahead and get ourselves, oh, I don't know, a creeper face. That looks pretty cool. Oh, wait, make sure to click draw. There we go. Now we can take it out. Uh, let's also get ourselves... This one looks pretty cool. And this one. Place your stencil on the block. And then apply some paint. And then remove the stencil by right-clicking. Ta-da! The stencil is applied. And you can stack stencils if you want. So if I were to go ahead and put this on here and apply some uh, green paint... Oh, that is cool looking, right? Not bad. Of course, I could also just apply red paint like this, and it works pretty well. You can also rotate your stencil by shift right clicking, and then apply your paint. Nice. This, of course, does also work on vanilla blocks. Not bad. There we go. Nice. Look at that. Pretty cool, right? So lots of really neat and fun options to do uh, with paint and stencils and all the different colors available to you with the paint mixer. That's impressive looking. Now, if you want, you can just go ahead and get yourself some white paint, or you can use a squeegee to completely clean stuff off. That switches it back to its normal, um, you know, vanilla texture um, or erases all the paint altogether. The squeegee. Gotta love it. Now let's get back to some other nifty toys. Uh, one of them being the fan. Oh boy. The fan will blow any entities, um, players, animals, etc. away from it. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. Cool. The hang glider right here allows you to hang glide. Simply uh, place it in your hand and right click. You'll know it's ready when you see it on the top there and jump. Hooray! Hang gliding. <laughs> How cool is that? Uh, hold shift to move a little bit faster, but it'll also cause you to descend faster. So it's just a fun way to kind of glide around. Not bad at all. Oh, luggage. Luggage is definitely one of my personal favorites. Let's take a look. Simply place it on the ground, and he'll follow you around. He'll also find nearby items and gobble them up. Thanks, little luggage guy. It's basically a chest that follows you around. Now, here's a really good trick. If you manage to get this thing struck by lightning, he will also grow in size. Like so. Ta-da! Now he stores much more items, and he glows in a really cool way. Good job, buddy. Om nom nom. Simply uh, shift-right-click on him to pick him back up as an item. 
Next up is a really nifty gadget, this guy right here, the sleeping bag. Simply place him on your back and your character will sleep wherever he's standing. Cool. It also does not change um, your uh, character's spawn point. So feel free to sleep out in the wild or wherever you happen to be and you won't need to carry a bed with you and you won't have your spawn point reset. Simply, like I said, equip it on your back. It'll automatically fall off your back if it's daytime. This next toy is more fun than you know. It's called the Sonic Glasses, and boom. Hey, what happened? Oh, look at that. It basically allows you to see sound. <laughs> As the player walks, it'll create sound entities of where the player is walking. You can kind of hear the sheep. You can kind of hear the cow nearby. Um, all kinds of different nifty sound effects. So you can kind of see pretty much any sound nearby. You can see when uh, blocks are placed or dug. Pretty crazy, right? So uh, the Sonic glasses, just a lot of fun. Ha, <laughs> cool. The next block, also for fun, the Crane Backpack, also goes hand in hand with the Crane Controller. Uh, simply hold Shift right click to drop the crane, right click to lift it up. Neat. And then once it's above a block, you can left click to pick that block up and carry it around with you. And then uh, shift right click to move it down again and left click to release it and the block is moved. Ha, huh, how cool is that? Uh, it works the same with entities and players, so feel free to pick up your friends and carry them around. They'll probably swing a sword at you. And finally, another very useful tool, the Slimalizer. Cool. Let's go over and walk over here. The Slimalizer turns green and emits a tone whenever you happen to be standing inside a slime chunk. So if we uh, bring on our chunk boundaries here, we'll see that this is the boundary of a chunk, and we can rest assured that this is a slime chunk. Once we leave the chunk, it turns off. Neat. Easy for finding those slimes when you really want to. All right, guys, I think I've pretty much shown you almost everything there is to see currently in open blocks. A lot of these items have been added recently, and there's a lot more to come. So keep your eye on this mod, because there's just, every day, new and new and interesting and cool things are being added. I mean, there's just tons of useful stuff, and also tons of really neat and fun stuff. The vacuum hopper, definitely one of my favorites, as is the elevator. I use elevators everywhere in my builds these days, just because they're so fun to travel around in. Stairs are boring. Uh, I definitely enjoy the paint stuff, and I think it's really cool. For those of you who are a little bit more artistic than I am, you'll probably probably find them a lot more useful than I have because I'm just not that good at making things that look nice. Um, but there's just so many blocks and so many different nifty things in here. I mean, even just fun little toys like the target thing here and, you know, just fun gadgets. The cannon is hilarious. You can, of course, um, if you want, use this as an item transport system. Just fire your cannon right there towards uh, that little guy and he'll most likely suck it in if you have it aimed properly and don't have it bounce off the block. So lots of fun to be had with the cannon and the all this stuff and I really like personally these blocks. You can use some uh, pencils to make like interesting invisible bridges and all kinds of different stuff. So. I think in the end, you're going to find a lot of fun with open blocks. For now, this is Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you've enjoyed the spotlight and take it easy. <laughs>